Okay, what's next? Let's talk about stress testing your cluster for benchmarking or for load testing. No need to stress about it. We have a tool, Cassandra Stress. See what I did there? What is Cassandra Stress? Weren't you listening? I just told you. It's a tool used for benchmarking or load testing your cluster and can simulate a user-defined load. Cassandra Stress can be used to do the following things. You can check out your schema performance, figure out how your database will scale, optimize your data model, and figure out your capacity in a production environment. So let me sum up. Cassandra Stress is a tool that will help you try out your database before you switch it all over to production. All right, let's talk about the Cassandra Stress configuration. There's going to be a special YAML file, the Cassandra Stress YAML file that you'll use to do this configuration. You can define your schema, you can specify a compaction strategy, or create a characteristic workload. This YAML file is broken up into a few pieces, schema description, which defines the key space, column descriptions, which outline how to create the simulated data, batch descriptions, which define the data insertion pattern, and query descriptions, which define the possible queries you can run in your test. We will cover each of these in a little more detail in the upcoming slides. Stay tuned. This first section we're going to talk about will define the key space and tables. If the schema already exists, it just deals with those key space and tables. If the schema doesn't exist, this test will go ahead and create the schema. Let's take a look at a real example. The top section here names the key space and then uses standard CQL to create the key space with a replication strategy. The lower part here are the CQL table definitions. Hopefully, you've already seen some CQL, so you don't need me to read you this slide. Next, the YAML file can help with column definition. This allows us to define how we will generate data for each column. The data generated is contrived, but it is created in such a way to simulate the patterns and frequency of your data. These generated values can follow standard distributions like normal or Gaussian or others. Parameters include the following. The data size, which is how many characters are in the data value. Value population, which is how often values reoccur. And finally, cluster distribution, which is the number of values for the column appearing in a partition. All right, I won't insult you by reading you these bullets, but take a look at the possible distributions supported in Cassandra Stress. These will allow you to model data that closely matches your real environment and data sets. All right, now let's see it in action. Let's take a look at your fancy YAML file. Here's an example of where you specify your column definitions and apply a different distribution per column should you need to or want to. Another section in the YAML describes batch configuration. This is where you would configure the batch type, the distribution ratio, and partition distribution, which is the number of partitions to update per batch. Okay, now back to the YAML file. We seem to spend a lot of time in here, don't we? Well, trust me, it's easier than I'm making it seem. Here is where you will configure the Cassandra Stress batch parameters. Another cool thing you can do is define the queries you want to run in your Cassandra Stress test by defining them under the query section in the YAML file. The fields parameter defines if the bind variables should be from the same row or across all the rows in the partition. Okay, back to the YAML file. I swear this is the last time, well, at least for this module. This is where you can specify the query or queries in CQL that will be executed for this test. Let's run an actual insert test with Cassandra Stress. On the command line, type the following code. Okay, this test is gonna start with four threads and increase them until an upper limit is hit. Inserts are done using native transport, for example, CQL. It's also gonna use prepared statements. To test the queries, we're going to use the YAML file where these queries are defined. In this case, it's called blogpost.yaml. Parameters to these commands are passed on the command line. Oh, look, you can combine both inserts and queries in the same command. In this example, we are sending three queries for every one insert. There are two single post queries and one timeline query. You can mix and match whatever number of inserts and queries you want to suit your needs. Okay, so enough of hearing me talk. Why don't you get your hands dirty and let's work through an exercise.